session we are going to learn about an interesting area yes it has become a condition without uh, these things running life is very difficult yes we are going to talk about polymers i hope boys this word is well known to you and we have a local channel in salem polymer channel Can you expand this word? Why they have uh, mentioned a polymer? I don't know what is the purpose. This uh, channel has been named like that. There we can derive some of the meanings too. Let us take example of this channel even polymer TV links many of the houses. This same channel brings a lot of programs. so we can use two of the words with this polymer many is one word the left hand side poly in greek means many mers in greek means parts that means a material which is made up of many parts we talk about polymers Which are the materials which are made up of many parts? Yes, starting from morning, you are brushing the bristles of your brushes. They are carrying nylon fibers. They are polymers. And uh, the PVC door. And we talk about the textiles. the silk uh, sari or the shirt uh, or we use a uh, uniform shirt and all the um, plain jerseys we use uh, and all of them are uh, polymers and you talk about uh, the nylon rope we talk about um, polythene paper polyethylene polythene sheet nowadays uh, we talk about more of uh, pollution because of uh, polythene papers and you look at most of your water bottles uh, they are uh, polymer made cotton is a polymer silk is a polymer and when we talk about pvc polyvinyl chloride it is a polymer your shoe is a polymer the sole is a polymer the rubber um, available in the form of tire is a polymer your uh, pencil eraser is a polymer and the pencil material with which is made up of plastic the um, coating and also the pens made up of plastic it's a polymer and uh, your bag uh, whatever bag you are using for your uh, school school bag is a polymer and when we talk about the wrappers uh, for your brown wrappers now lamination sheets for your notebooks a polymer so most of them are polymers we can't imagine whatever cups we are using the polystyrene cups the tea cups we are using it's a polymer so polymers are everywhere we have to learn about them before going for the methods of preparing various polymers i hope boys at the end of this session you will gain a lot of interest in learning about polymers and uh, You may choose uh, polymer chemistry as one of your specialization in your higher studies because lot of research is going on in uh, polymer science. So, a polymer can be defined as a compound in which smaller units, called monomers, combine to form a larger unit. In other words. A polymer is formed when many monomers are linked together in a chain. Thus, a monomer is the building block or repeating structural unit of a polymer. Monomers are simple reactive molecules. They join by covalent bonds to form polymers. in a process called polymerization 
Polymers are extremely large molecules with high molecular masses. For this reason, they are also called macromolecules. Polymers have a wide variety of applications. In fact, the use of polymers marked a revolutionary step towards modern civilization. Polymers are used in the manufacture of plastic buckets, plastic cups and saucers, children's toys and synthetic clothing material. Plastics brought about remarkable changes in society and made life easier and more comfortable. Other materials made from polymers include automobile tires, packaging bags, gears, seals and electrical insulation. Polymers are the basis for four major industries, plastics, elastomers, fibers and paints and varnishes. So polymers are classified this way. First classification according to the source of their availability. What do they want to say? tell us? That is uh, some of the polymers are naturally availing, available. So they are called as the natural polymers. Some of the polymers are synthetically prepared. So they are so called as the synthetic polymers. Some of them are semi-synthetic. So we can classify according to the source of availability as natural, synthetic and semi-synthetic polymers. Natural polymers, uh, uh, Salem and in and around Salem is gifted with uh, uh, so many of the forms and fields where we see the cotton plants. And cotton plant gives a natural fiber. And with the natural fibers, we convert them into thread. And from the thread, you knit it and convert them into cloth, textile. You stitch it, it becomes your shirt or it becomes your pants. So cotton and silk, silk, you know, Gansbrum uh, sari silk saris are known for it. They are from uh, the natural source. And uh, it is being imparted with the different colors and to give different combinations. And that is the natural sources. So you can uh, take example cotton and uh, silk, naturally available form. Then what are the synthetic uh, polymers uh, which are available? We are uh, getting the ethylene or propylene and we go for a process of a polymerization. How to do polymerization process they may ask in a tumor or tumor. The monomers will join to form polymers. That won't happen in normal condition. Sometimes it requires a little bit of heating. Sometimes we have to give enormous amount of pressure. Certain atmospheric pressure we have to supply. That time monomers will join to give the polymers. Um, the deep study about how do they react and form different polymers we will learn in the next session. So synthetic polymers is uh, one as a carry bag we are using is uh, polyethylene, polyethylene. Just for example, I am giving you uh, CH2 double bond CH2. This is an alkene and it is uh, the simplest alkene possible called as the ethylene, IUPAC name, ethene. Two carbon atoms are there, it starts with the ether and since it is double bonded it is called as the 
yin, ending with the yin. And as you know, boys in chemistry, this bond, this single bond, formed by a sigma linkage, that is a linear overlap, very strong. And this is done by a lateral overlap. Then linear overlap is very strong and lateral overlap is weak, that is pi bonding you can easily break. Imagine uh, uh, two boys are standing and if they give one one hand it becomes a single bond, they give two two hands it becomes a double bond. And one of the, is a, this is one pair, maybe two boys. This is one boy ethylene, this is another boy another ethylene. Here what happens, the bond breaks here. As I told you, there are uh, two bonding, double bonding available. One of the bond we are breaking and joining with the neighboring pair. And this is what is happening here. This is uh, one pair, this is another pair. We break one of the bond, this carbon will get one electron this carbon will get one electron. Same way here you break the bond, this carbon will get one electron, this carbon will get one electron. So the pi bonding will now become sigma bonding only, that is one bond will disappear. As I told you, these two pairs can join easily with the neighboring pair. How? For joining we require one one hand, that is one one electron. And if you join them easily, what will happen? There will be a new single bond formed between these two pairs. But this ethylene or ethene will join, join with the neighboring ethylene. So you imagine a situation like that, ethylene molecules, left hand side 2 lakh, right hand side the side some 2 lakh they join and they go for a big chain, linear chain of a um, a polymer called as a polyethylene. So how can I write this molecule in short form? CH2 single bond CH2 and this linkage will go for n times, means many times. So ethylene obtained from petroleum refineries uh, that will be taken and they will give the required a temperature and a pressure and the monomers will join this is a monomer and this other monomer like that monomers will join to give a polymer then that is polypropylene, polyethylene and we look at the parachute cloth and the ropes and all are tough they are prepared just like that in the laboratory now the manufacture has become so simple, so even a small scale industry they prepare a lot of uh, polymers. You can uh, earn a lot of money if you have uh, even a small scale industry. And this is a synthetic type of polymers. What a semi uh, synthetic type. Uh, so we talk about a viscous rayon and uh, cellulose acetate, all these are uh, semi-synthetic type of polymers where we mix both natural and synthetic. So we go for a combination of these two and prepare um, the next category. That's why some of your uh, textile or uh, shirt material see they mention the percentage 65-35. They call them as a terry cotton it's a combination of a synthetic polymer and a natural polymer. Polymers are further classified according to their structure, that is the chemical structure of the molecule. How? Some may be linear polymerization they were prepared. Some may be prepared by branched polymerization. Some may be cross-linked polymerization. So, uh, the best example is the high-density polyethylene. They will go for a linear polymerization of a densely packed ethylene molecules or you can go for uh, PVC. 
This is the most uh, useful component for us. Well, uh, the construction of building, we have to go for uh, plumbing and uh, wiring, very electrical wiring. For all that, we go for PVC, polyvinyl chloride. We are fortunate uh, in nearby place to Salem, we have a huge plant, Chemplast. Chemplast. See, in Metro, they manufacture the raw materials for the preparation of uh, uh, EDC or uh, PVC. And all these uh, combinations uh, are useful for uh, a linear chain uh, polymer manufacturing. And we have also branched uh, chain that is low density polyethylene, polypropylene molecule. All these things, so the linear chain uh, here and there they'll go for branching. And uh, the purpose of uh, going for that differs because the usage also differs. Cross-linked polymers is the next area. What are cross-linked? They go for a dense linking between different layers. So because of that the tensile capacity and strength all that will get increased. So that these cross-linked polymers will find a lot of use in uh, tire making or we talk about bakelite you know your uh, most of the vehicles nowadays, uh, your switches um, in the houses are made up of a big light. Like you can see in the gas stove, the handles, uh, and the washing machines, the TV, and grinders. They make using the kind of uh, polymer called as a uh, big light. They are cross-linked polymers. They are very strong in nature. That's why they are talking about structure. Structurally they may be linear, sometimes they may be branched and uh, sometimes they may be cross-linked uh, in nature. Next one is, uh, they are classified according to the molecular forces. What about, uh, now we are going deep into the chemistry behind this uh, particular uh, polymer formation, yes. Molecular forces. What are the forces acting for the polymerization process? You have seen uh, an interesting group of polymers called as uh, elastomers and uh, fibrous uh, proteins or sorry, fibrous uh, polymers. And we talk about thermo softening uh, polymers and uh, thermo setting polymers. All these classifications are quite interesting for us. Some of the um, uh, elastomers we are using, they are uh, stretchy and uh, uh, we can um, bring them to uh, a stretched position for example, uh, like a rubber band, I can bring it back. These uh, elastomers will have uh, a bonding such a way that they can be relaxed for a certain extent and uh, you can bring it back. And uh, the best example, they are sometimes uh, tough also. Like you, you can think of uh, the tire making process, we talk about uh, Buna Yen, Buna Yes type of um, elastomers and uh, there the bus or lorry carries it for longer distance also nothing happens. You can think of uh, neoprene is an elastomer type. Next one fibrous polymers, what are they? And morning I told you we use uh, um, the bristles. All of them are made up of nylon. They are thread like polymers and it can go for a, a long distance. Look at the word nylon. If you break it, uh, you will get a very interesting uh, information about nylon. 
and one uh, particular uh, interpretation says that uh, they would have given the name because uh, when uh, two of the scientists they were uh, traveling over flight from two different uh, countries can you have a guess yes united states and uh, britain that is uh, new york to london if you have a particular polymer that is the nylon rope tied maybe you can think of uh, white house to um, buckingham palace also very huge in thousands kilometer goes but the rope is very strong it can stay without breaking so such is the capacity of this uh, fibrous uh, polymers many fields we are using you look at the shoes they are talking about the nylon grip and the uh, mr of tires they made uh, uh, using this combinations also they are nowadays going for mixing of uh, fiber content so that they will be long lasting so lot of research is on to this uh, fibrous protein as uh, a fibrous polymers and the next category is a thermo softening type of plastics what are they today you try you take a candy bag and carefully you melt it in a candle flame after some time it will catch fire or uh, while heating from the solid structure it will deform and get converted into a liquid form and they will melt that is why some of the rag pickers uh, or in the streets some people will collect the plastic paper and give it to the old paper merchants and then they will uh, in turn give it to the plastic company they will remelt it and uh, give it to us so they are uh, mostly that black colored uh, polythene covers or uh, recycled ones and uh, this dark blue and all and so thermo softening means when supplying heat they will become soft or liquefy can be remolded so we can take uh, polythene as one of the example pvc can be taken as example then what are thermo setting plastics thermo setting plastics nature you cannot uh, reconvert them you, you cannot remold them and uh, in case if you are trying to convert them they may become infusible or they may become powder and fall down you you can try it with your uh, broken switches and try to heat them it can withstand a huge temperature that's why in uh, gas uh, that is uh, in the pressure cooker the handles uh, and some of the towels they handle so they make using bake light uh, or uh, thermo setting uh, plastics and uh, these plastics have the capacity to withstand high temperature and they are very hard to and uh, we have learned something about uh, source of availability we classify and we talked about the um, uh, structure of this molecule and the molecular forces the next category the mode of uh, manufacturing or uh, preparing the polymerization process from the more we can talk about addition polymerization and we can talk about uh, condensation polymerization addition condensation when we just now i gave an example of ethylene converted into polyethylene we don't uh, remove any of uh, any of the compound just to break one of the pi bond you will get one one electron you join with the neighbor the side and the side and that uh, involves only a little energy and pressure has to be given you break it and form all these uh, linear polymerization Uh, STP, LDP, all these are coming under addition type. Breaking of a pi bond, you break and join left side and right side. Addition polymerization. If you go for condensation polymerization, sometimes a molecule of water or ammonia will be removed, or else uh, 
they may not be removed by joining two two molecules in neighborhood uh, by removing certain things they so they are coming under a condensation time for example uh, we can uh, uh, go for amide type of polymerization or ester type of polymerization you know when uh, acid and uh, an alcohol or nearby and there there is a possibility of a loss of water and similarly when there is a combination of an uh, acid and an amine group uh, is available then also you can think of a loss of water molecule so the loss of water molecule will make the process of joining uh, two of the monomers or three of the monomers or many of the monomers then we go for polymerization that is uh, the next step so now you have understood the uh, classification in polymerization process uh, and this can be asked uh, uh, some area maybe according to the structure or maybe molecular forces uh, or in an objective an example so all these area with reference to the objectives and two and three marks you have to in polymerization the next important area is uh, types of polymerization yes depending upon how we prepare the polymers uh, the polymers are classified into addition polymerization and uh, condensation polymerization in again in addition polymerization in particular we will be learning about free radical method of polymerization then we talk about cationic and anionic type of polymerization what is free radical polymerization as i told you if uh, one of the bond is broken uh, homolytically every participating atom will receive its own electron then they are called as odd electron molecules they are called as free radicals they are highly reactive part of any of the substance so using this we are going to learn how free radicals uh, are useful in the polymerization process so in particular we are going to talk about the mechanism of this uh, polymerization so there are three steps available first step is the chain initiation type of uh, chain initiation type we have to learn and the next we have propagation and uh, termination so usually this addition type of polymerization is always known as a growing chain polymerization the chain length the length will keep on increasing whereas in condensation sometimes we will lose a molecule of water or without loss we can go for the condensation polymerization and um, in initiation type uh, what they do for example we go for styrene into polystyrene so it's a um, perfect polymerization process styrene gets converted to polystyrene it's a very useful compound and in the thermocol manufacturing and uh, hot in cup manufacturing we talk about the polystyrene's usage and this we have to understand how to prepare in the laboratory so for that purpose they go for uh, a benzyl peroxide is a free radical initiator so the reactant uh, this also will be taken along with the so this is called as a benzyl peroxide and, and there is a benzene thing attached to the other side and the first step is the initiation step in initiation step what happens sir uh, one of this bond will break homolytically because of that uh, the formation of two of the benzyl peroxide free radicals will be formed so this is the first step 
when you get two molecules of uh, maybe I can write the benzene ring and C double bond O and the O that is dot. Again here this bond will break now. When this bond breaks, uh, before going further, you should know the geometry or uh, the chemical nature of a benzene ring. The benzene ring uh, is an hexagonal molecule and there every corner is made up of a carbon. And every carbon is attached with one of the hydrogen. And that's why the molecular formula of benzene is C6H6. And again it has alternating double bonds instead of going for alternating double bond because the resonating structure keep on changing it. We go for a dotted circle or a full circle inside the middle. So when you break one of this bond that means this particular entity is nothing but a C6H5 only. Because one of the hydrogen is removed and attached with the C double bond O and O group. So when this bond breaks, what happens? The one of the electron will be with this phenyl group and another electron with the carbon. So this electron will come here and this electron will go here. Both of them join to give one more bond that is formation of a pi bond. Then you will get a C double bond O, double bond O, then that is nothing but a CO2, carbon dioxide, two molecules will be formed because we took a two molecules. And here this there is a formation of a phenyl free radical. That I am writing this way. There is a formation of a C with a one electron. This is a free radical available. So this is the, the main initiation step where the free radical is formed. This free, free radical is going to react with the styrene. So we need to understand the uh, shape of styrene or structure of styrene that carries a CH2 single bond CH and the C6H5 and there is one more bond here called as a pi bond is also available. Only this pi bond you can easily break. And the same molecule I can write in different format also. Carbon, double bond carbon and here the C6H5 group and this hydrogen I am writing here. Similarly two hydrogens for this molecule. This is styrene. Now styrene is going to react with that of phenyl free radical. Phenyl free radical, the first step we got. We are adding this. What are we doing now? The polymerization process, one of this pi bond breaks here. This will get, this carbon gets one electron. This carbon gets one electron. This is the first step. So now this phenyl's electron and this carbon's electron will go for a single bond formation. Because of that formation, we will get a compound here that benzene ring and C H here and another H on the top and the carbon we will get C six H five. And uh, here one hydrogen, one more free radical. So the free radical is available on the terminal position. Now this particular uh, group uh, will grow, go join with another styrene molecule. Again the chain length will start uh, growing further and further. That's why it is called as a growing chain type of polymerization. So, this styrene many numbers will join. I can write a CH2 single bond CH and C6H5. C6H5 will go in the many numbers n times. So that is why it is called as a propagation step. And uh, one occasion uh, we wanted to stop it. It may go in thousands, many thousands it will go. Keep on continuing. 
we wanted to break this molecule. What we have to do? We have to go for a termination step. So the last step of this process of polymerization is the termination. Otherwise the process will be continuously on. We have to stop it. For termination step, one way they will stop one of the reactant, maybe a styrene molecule supply they will cut or they will uh, uh, supply more amount of uh, oxygen. So that will go and terminate the process. How? One of the biggest molecule of uh, styrene polymer will join with the neighboring biggest molecule of styrene, then the termination step will take place. Okay? So this both will join to form a termination. So this is all in polymerization, particularly free radical mechanism. We go for initiation, propagation and the termination. The first step is initiation. The growing chain we call it as a propagation. And the last step we talk about termination. In uh, addition polymerization, let us discuss uh, some of the examples how to prepare uh, certain pos uh, polymers which we regularly use them in day to day life. To start with, the first one preparation of uh, polyethylene or ethene. Polythene. I told you in the beginning itself. Uh, Polythene, there are two types available that is uh, low density polyethylene LDPE and high density polyethylene HDPE. And uh, the, you know the requirement uh, differs, so obviously they go for different types of uh, polymerization. So, uh, as I told you, this um, addition polymerization requires an initiation step. Uh, for example, uh, um, just now we learned about benzyl peroxide. A peroxide initiation is required for this process also. 
chain will be initiated, then it will go for propagation, finally it will be terminated. So in ethylene uh, molecule, you know CH2 double bond CH2 and that goes with the neighboring molecules. I explained that uh, in the previous session, uh, let me do it again. That is uh, another ethylene molecule, like that you go for any monomers connector and one of these bond, pi bond will break uh, so the past participating atoms will get one one electron. Again here the pi bond breaks and he will get one electron and this uh, carbon will get one electron. Like that imagine so many molecules left and right. Now, this double bond has become single bond but this uh, no bond between these two molecules we will be now form a new bond. So this way left side so many and right side so many you will get a polymer where I can write CH2, single bond CH2 many times ethylene becomes a polyethylene, many ethylene that n times may go in millions also depending upon the requirement and what condition this will happen maybe we can take 200 to 300 degrees Celsius and around 1000 atmospheric pressure is required. With the presence of a peroxide as a catalyst or initiator, this process can be done. You know, the use of uh, polythene, the manufacture of uh, toys, they use uh, uh, very light uh, carry bags and other materials, uh, covering material, wrapping material, they go for uh, polythene. And if you go for high density polyethylene, eh, same process only, the temperature may be around uh, 100 degrees Celsius and they may go for uh, some uh, atmospheric pressure, maybe 6 to 7 atmospheric pressure, but the catalyst will uh, differ. They go for uh, Zetten catalyst, that is uh, Zeiger, Zeigler Nata catalyst. That is nothing but uh, titanium tetrachloride and uh, triethyl aluminium. So this catalyst is a must for this uh, process. So when you go for this uh, process, high density polyethylene can be prepared. That uh, is having a better capacity, so for many of uh, water bottles or tough wares, uh, we go for uh, this particular polymer. And the next one, we have to talk about uh, the most useful compound in the kitchen as a coating material called as Teflon. You would have heard this word. After uh, purchasing the new vehicle, uh, the person, the salesperson will come and tell you to go for a te Teflon coating. Now if you go for the 3M car uh, uh, workshop and all, they talk about uh, a, a coating over our car. Maybe the paint texture or the color or shininess will be retained for so many years also. And because that is a polymer coating, a mild scratches or sometimes the sun's uh, uh, impact, uh, the color fading won't uh, happen. So Teflon, what is uh, Teflon? Similar molecule only, in the place of uh, hydrogen we go for uh, fluorine. So CF2 double bond with CF2, that's all. And usually boys when we talk about polymerization it involves a lot of equations. So the students uh, think that that is a difficult content. But uh, don't think that uh, this uh, area where uh, equations will be of a similar nature only. If you understand the base and learning becomes easier. And CF2, double bond CF2, as I told you, it goes for uh, many number. And the pi bond breaks, uh, one electron here, one electron here, imagine right side and the left side. And uh, it uh, polymerizes to so give uh, CF2, single bond CF2 and left hand side and right hand side will go for the many numbers. 
this is uh, tetrafluoroethylene will go for a polymerization to give teflon a long chain polymer is possible and uh, this uh, uh, teflon is used to, as a coating material and um, you know uh, we can think of uh, uh, our non-stick tawa that is uh, for making the dosa they use a tawa pan and your uh, mother is uh, nowadays having a little oil for that or sometimes uh, no oil now they easily she rolls it out of the plate uh, and uh, hot plate and give it to you and the reason is uh, the non-sticky nature of that particular vessel because they coat it with uh, teflon so the thickness of the coating depends on the quality of uh, the product so the teflon coated vessels uh, because it's non-sticky in nature the uh, easy to handle easy to wash uh, and also it is a uh, long lasting and the next uh, thing we have to talk in addition for polymerization is uh, orron and it is always uh, called as a polyacrylonitriles pan polyacrylonitriles so these uh, are the polymers where we have uh, CH2 double bond CH and this CN we learnt in uh, styrene uh, C6H5 but here instead of C6H5 we go for a cyanide group we can talk about vinyl cyanide it goes for polymerization as usual the same logic only you break a bond one electron here and one electron here it goes right and left and side continuously and you get a polymer that is uh, CH2 single bond CH and uh, CN left side and right side many numbers you will get a pan polyacrylonitrile so what is the use of this polymer? It is a fine fibrous polymer. It is used like uh, wool, uh, like uh, materials used during the winter season as a warm bed. And sometimes when we are uh, um, feeling very chill, we use the sweaters. For all those purposes, we can use uh, an polyacrylonitrile. So these are the example manufacturers of uh, addition.